I've known John for a few years. He's been talking about weight as an issue. And I said, you know what, I've got a few new things that I'm doing. I'd love to give it a try with you. So he came in two days ago, and we did the Asira. And basically with the Asira, it came up with some you know, specific issues. One was, was lung. In this case, you have emphysema. Okay. And it came up with other issues in the frontal sinuses, mm -hmm. which you have also. And the kidney meridian, which would relate to back pain, which is something that he also has. And, uh, and some hormonal issues that are going on. And as we reviewed them, everything correlated well. Okay? So why did I do the Asira for weight loss? Number one, the Asira is about balancing the body system. So we're going to balance out all of the meridians or energy channels. And that's the first place to call. Functional medicine is what I do. Correct function and the body corrects itself. So if we can balance your hormonal system, balance your meridians, nutritionally supplement anything that you're deficient in, your body will start working properly, and it starts working properly, you will normalize, and weight happens to be one of them. Okay? Now, weight in America has to do more than with just balance. A lot of it has to do with behavior, and I think we'll all agree on it. It's, it's how we were brought up. So I've created a very simple uh, behavior modification program which I have used for, oh, the last 15 years. Okay, so this is going towards the people that are over 40 and is where it works best, but it could be others as well. When I grew up in the uh, 1950s, uh, it was a time of great abundance. World War II had ended, there was plenty of food. Okay, this is what I was taught on every single day of my life for dinner. Okay. We would sit down, number one, I had four brothers, there were six of us. Mom would put the food down and she would put the portions on her plate, which were all more than what we needed. Okay, And then we would begin eating when Dad got home. And then the line we would get is one of, the, one, of, one of the following. Eat everything on your plate, children are starving in China. Okay. Now other families are taught, eat everything on your plate, children are starving in Africa. Children are starving in Asia, but the point was, it was children are starving in another part of the world, so be grateful for what you have and eat it all. The end result is, when we were comfortable and stopped eating, we were then told, or forced fed to, to, to eat ourselves more, to the point that we began eating too much. So number one, if you're a new parent and your child says, um, I don't want any more, you say, that's fine. Number two, if we didn't finish our food that was on the plate, we didn't get dessert. So not only did we overeat, but then we forced ourselves so that we could then get ice cream, which was something that was unheard of prior to that time. Okay? Today we, well, take ice cream for granted, but you know, in the 1940s, not everybody had a freezer. Yeah. 1950s is when it just started. It's interesting how times have changed. And yes, it was black and white TV then. Okay, so. What other things were I taught? Now, were you taught to be a member of the Clean Plate Club? Yeah, that and actually something else too. What? If you if you felt sad, if you were crying, if you bumped your knee, what they would say is here, have an ice cream, have a piece of candy. Exactly. So it was almost used as a way of of dealing with whatever disappointments or pains that you had. So right. it almost act they almost treated it like it was penicillin. Right. And there's no question. If a child is in a car seat and they're crying and you're driving the car, what do you do? You stick something in their mouth, oh, and as soon as they start to eat, okay, they cry, a baby cries, you stick a bottle in their mouth, and they stop crying. So we learned that when we're under stress, which when we were a baby was hungry, wet, tired, or in pain, you, you put food in your mouth and you stop crying, the stress is reduced. Now eventually, the wetness and the tiredness and the pain would come out and you start crying, but food worked good. So that is a primary area. The other one, as we said, mom is eat everything on your plate. Now, I, my family was reiterated by my grandmother. My grandmother grew up in Russia, and she grew up at a time of famines. And she'd say, Cliffy, eat everything on your plate. Okay, when I was your age, sometimes all we had was potato soup. And sometimes we didn't have potatoes. So be grateful for the food that you have. And she was very sincere, and that is survival 101 up until the 1930s. Prior to the 1930s, 
food was not abundant. You had to eat everything, and a fat baby survived where a skinny baby didn't. A fat person survived famine. So now we're bombarded with eating everything on your plate. Children are starving and trying to be a member of the Clean Plate Club. Oh, you hurt yourself? Here's a lollipop. Oh, you're under stress? Here's a lollipop. So all of these behaviors have been, been learned. We, we were actually taught to be overweight. Okay, let's add one more to the scene. I grew up in a large family, so the food was there, and the deal was the in the middle of the table was the extras, called the seconds. If you want seconds, you have to finish your plate. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't mean you just finish your meat to get meat. It's your plate had to be finished, then you can get seconds. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? It became a race. We're, now we're eating fast, and as we eat fast, what happens? The food's going in. You don't fill up as quickly, but, but because you're not chewing very much, it's just going in. You're feeling physically full, but you're not satiated. If you slow down when you eat and you chew your food a hundred times, it'll take you three times as long to eat, and the blood sugar levels will start to rise, and you'll feel comfortable and you'll stop eating. So, if you did, you grow up in a family where everybody ate fast. Well, that and actually, as I became an adult, you know, you're working these jobs where you're sitting at a desk or doing something and grabbing something to eat while you're doing it. And that was a lot of that as, as I became older. I was always, uh, you know, on a high-stress job, throwing myself into it, not going for lunch, but having somebody grab you a sub while you're working. So I think that I did that. And yeah. that carried on even more so. And, and, and that becomes obvious because there's America. We're so busy working that we stop exercising because we're more in tune to, uh, uh, to trying to make a living than take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're in sync on a few things. So number one, we gave you a homeopathic remedy, which is a balancing remedy. Mm -hmm. We also gave you life force to take. And one other item was a digestive enzymes, which is basically what the Osira said to take. So this is what was recommended by the computer and it's also recommended by me. So you just came in. What was your what did you feel in the last two days? And by the way, we didn't discuss anything to do with weight as far as specifically don't eat or anything. Just more we're just trying to balance your body. What what did you sense in the last few days? Okay, look, I must tell you that coming in I was skeptical because I'm a skeptical kind of guy, so the results that I have felt in the last couple of days are nothing short of remarkable. I mean I uh, I wasn't sleeping well, now I'm sleeping well. I am eating less, I am feeling more full, I don't have the craving to eat that I did before. Uh, my energy level is up, I mean remarkably so. Uh, also what I'm finding is that the first day that I took took the stuff, I mean I woke up the next morning, I mean I've had chronic block sinuses for years and everything, you know, not to get too graphic, but everything was just pouring out of me. Now, that's happened two days in a row. Okay. I was up early this morning, I mean there were times that this may have been the only thing I would do today would be to go see a doctor or do something. I've done a plethora of things today. So, um, yeah, I mean, I... So in two days, your energy level has come up dramatically. Okay. I, when I wouldn't believe this, I mean, if somebody else told me this was happening, yeah. or this could happen, I wouldn't have believed them if I didn't experience myself. So okay. I'm, I'm quite I'm quite surprised and, and pleased over it. Okay, good. So, part one of Weight Loss 101 with Dr. Cliff is, we do the Asire that balances you out. We look at nutritionally what needs to be done. In your case, digestive enzymes were needed to help improve digestion. Now, we always start with digestion first. If there's an issue there. If you can't also work normally, nothing's going to work. Mm -hmm. So, as a nutritionist, that's one area. And we gave you the remedy, we didn't give you any other specific instructions. Now, we just reviewed a few things, and now we're freebies, okay? okay. Do you like freebies? Absolutely. I love freebies. Okay. I love for them. Now, most people, their excuse for just about everything, like, I don't go to the doctors. Why? Because I can't afford it. So I'm going to give you the freebies. And they're fr since they're free, there's no excuse. Okay, free. Number one, water. Drink water. Mm. Now, if you want to spend money, enjoy Avion. Enjoy the most expensive bottles of water there are. But if you can't afford it, tap water works just fine. Filtered water is better. Okay? How many? Eight glasses of water a day. This is probably the most important thing when it comes to weight loss. In America, we 